Hi guys, um, before I move on to the next part of this project, uh, which will probably be uh, adjusting the uh, space or varying the space between the plates, I just want to have one final look at this um, notion where uh, the cell seems to be acting something like a capacitor or something like a battery, I'm not sure which, I've got a feeling it's going to turn out to be a battery rather than a capacitor because um, when I measured the capacitance um, uh, uh, with an air dielectric, it's um, oh, uh, around 80 something picofarads. And then when I put water in, I found it very difficult to get a capacitance reading. Um, uh, I think I got something like something like one and a half microfarads. Um, I'll put it on the screen, though, what it actually was that I measured. and. Um, I think that the sort of voltage um, that's, I'm going to say, ever present in the cell uh, has influenced my capacitance bridge. It'd be nice if it was a 1.5 microfarad capacitor because that, that would be a really useful uh, capacitance to, to work at uh, resonance. But um, in a, a future video, what I will do is I will ring the capacitor uh, against an inductor, that is, I will create a, a resonance circuit and find out what it rings at. Um, but all through this thing, this this very simple bit of water has actually proved out to be very complicated. I've, I've found out um, that its uh, resistance changes with temperature by about getting on for half a de uh, half an ohm per degree centigrade. Uh, falling as it gets uh, warmer and uh, the fact that there's that um, uh, very sharp change in uh, resistance uh, subject to applied voltage with uh, uh, the lower voltages um, uh, letting the water look as though it's got a, a significantly higher resistance. Um, so I say, uh, I'll just do this <laughs> this final test and then uh, as long as that doesn't raise too many more questions then I'll be moving on to spacing. Um, thanks for watching guys, I do appreciate the input and, and the interest that uh, folk have shown in this. So let me remind you of the phenomenon that uh, I'm sort of investigating here. and. Um, got the cell here and uh, that's just the little uh, monitor there my power supply uh, this AVO is uh, measuring the current into the cell and then after the AVO after this meter uh, I've got this meter connected directly across the coax that's feeding the cell uh, so, and this is reading volts so I'm on the 3 volt uh, range there, so 3 volts DC and uh, it, I've adjusted the voltage such that uh, when I switch it on there you'll see this meter kick right over that's on 1 milliamp so you'll see it'll take 1 milliamp um, I'm going to say charge and then that'll fall back and uh, I forget what the voltage was but it, it's less than a volt so um, that's the 1 volt range uh, or the 1 volt scale there 2 volts as I say we're on 3 volts full scale deflection um, so uh, as I say I'll switch it on the volts will go uh, uh, will climb slowly but you'll see this initial kick of the current meter that'll fall back then the interesting thing comes when I switch it off you'll see that uh, the voltage um, well let's do it oh by the way um, the current is going to reverse. When I switch off the power supply, the current, instead of going from the power supply to the cell, it's going to go in the opposite direction. It's going to go from the cell into the power supply. And uh, so this meter will flip into reverse. And um, it looks like Mr. Avo knew I was going to do this test because he's given me uh, a reverse um, movement uh, button here. So when I press this button, it actually reverses the uh, the, the movement, and um, so that they uh, where the meter you'll see is going negative, that'll that'll reverse it. So when I press that button, what we'll be seeing is uh, the 
the current, uh, the reversed current. So it's the same as just swapping those two wires over. Those are my two connections going to, you know, I don't know if you've got that. It's the same as swapping those two connections over. Okay, so I'll switch it on. Hope I'm not in, in the way of the camera. So that's that initial kick. Uh, and then the volts climb and then the current is falling so we're here at um, uh, something like point, uh, six, um, nine, getting on for point 0.7 of a volt um, milliamps uh, this top scale the 10 is 1 milliamp uh, so uh, we're reading point 0.1 uh, th that that one is point 0.1 of a milliamp. I can't get over the meter, so I can't read it accurately. Now, when I switch off the power supply, um, it's going to reverse that meter, and you'll see it, it'll go fairly hard over. And when it does, I'm also going to press this button to change the direction of the um, uh, the current on the meter. So you see, it's gone hard over there. Now I've pulled that out. And you could see uh, that current being reversed. So this is current that is in actual fact negative. We've still got volts on there. Um, uh, that's 0.1 of a volt now. Incidentally, I'm not interested in the cell temperature, but it's at, uh, uh, between 19.9 and 20 degrees centigrade. So that's that I don't think has any relevance at all. Um, to get this to zero, these two are actually across the cell, across the voltmeter, and I have to short it out. But you see, it actually recovers, um, which I don't think if it was a capacitor, it, uh, it would be doing that. So I think that's acting as a battery. Um, I'll repeat that test again for you. So this will make uh, the meter is reading normally now. I'll switch it on. We'll see a uh, very slow voltage here, but a, a, a rapid kick there. And uh, that eventually will stabilize at some, some current level. And then when I switch off the supply, right, reverse the meter, so it's this current going in the other direction, uh, something over a milliamp. Sorry, uh, over um, uh, uh, 0.3 of a milliamp. What I've done now is I've replaced the cell with a capacitor tried several different capacitors. I started off with a 0.1 microfarad and um, then a 47 microfarad and uh, anyway, I'm now on a 1000 microfarad capacitor um, and what I'm looking for it was a, a, a capacitance value that gives me the same sort of uh, conditions and let me show you. I'm going to switch it on there so you see I've got that swing uh, the drop is, uh, well the falling current is, is greater than it was in the cell. Now when I switch it off, I, I suspect that um, initial flip uh, into the positive was uh, a transient, so I'm going to repeat that test. Put that there, <coughs> back on. Right, I'm going to switch it on again. So it's a, a, exactly the same voltage setting, I haven't changed anything. And then I'll switch it off and I'm getting ready to reverse the meter. Yeah. So um, you would say that if it was, were a capacitor, that would be the equivalent, the cell, I don't know if I'm getting that in shot, the cell would be equivalent to this uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor. Um, something else that I'll show you, um, previously uh, I showed you on the cell, when I short it out, it actually recovers, I'll maybe come back to that. Um, but a capacitor, when you short it out, it stays shorted out. Um, 
always dangerous doing this, <laughs> shorting this out with the meter on. So I'll switch the power on. We get the kick. Um, uh, I'll switch off, reverse the meter, short it out, and it stays shorted. It, you know, the, once the current is discharged from the capacitor, it's gone and stays gone. I'll do that again, so meters in the right direction, power on, got the kick, switch it off, reverse the meter, short it out, and the current's gone. I'll, I'll put it back onto the cell. Now I've got the cell coupled uh, across the power supply again, and um, I, everything's the same, same voltage settings. I switch it on, I get the kick, that we've seen before. Now I'll switch it off and I'll reverse the meter. That's off, reverse the meter. Now I'll short it out. And you see it recovers when I take the short off. That doesn't happen with a capacitor, or with a normal capacitor anyway. What I've done now is I've taken a perfectly good um, Duracell battery and flattened it uh, so as I've got about 0.8 of a volt on it and um, I'm going to switch the power on so that's connected as the cell was and as the capacitor was. I'll switch it on. I'm just going to drop the volts just a little bit. I can't discharge a battery, it keeps charging up. Um, Oh, look at that, that's just, that's interesting. Um, let me switch that off. Okay, what I've got now is um, uh, a Duracell battery. It was a perfectly good battery, but I've discharged it to get it down to about 0.7 of a volt. Um, Blessed thing keeps recovering, it's, uh, it's still hot. Um, so that's connected across uh, where the cell was connected and where the capacitor was before. So that's its voltage. And the switch on, uh, that's again uh, 1 milliamp full scale deflection. Um, so that's behaving like a, a cell. When I switch it off, I need to reverse my meter. So I'll reverse the current. Uh, that current is flowing uh, into there. Uh, as I short out the battery, so it recovers uh, a little bit like the cell did. I don't know if I'm getting that in shot as a, there. So a little bit the way the cell recovered, uh, but certainly uh, the capacitor didn't recover like that. Okay, I'm abusing my equipment, so before I do anything really daft, I'll just take that off current. Anyway, um, so I think I can say the cell behaves more like a battery than a capacitor. Obviously it's got capacitance, uh, but in order to establish what that capacitance is, I can't use my capacitance bridge because the, uh, the battery-like effect uh, from the cell confuses the bridge. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.